Ms. Hamm, we're going to let you go first. Statewide, this is just a snapshot of Covington's projects in particular. But if you wanted to back out and have it, you know, look at it from the statewide perspective, you could do that. And you see that we have on time and on budget are the primary things that that we track. Uh, and then there are some. If, if you go inside each project, you can get a little bit more detail. But the purpose of doing this is to make sure that. We are moving forward with projects that we're making, that we're making progress, that uh, we're trying to keep them on schedule. The way that projects are funded now, um, there's a, a shorter duration that is there to complete it, and we want to make sure that that there are some situations where if it doesn't move forward, there's a the funds might be lost, and we don't want the locality to be in that situation at all. We want to help you move forward. So that's part of this tracking. Um, so to break that down for you, I've got two attachments I think that you guys should have. There's one, uh, the one that's in color. Well, we can start with that one. So this list is, these are actually active projects that have received funding. And it's the list is relatively short, so I'll, I'll just walk through it with you. First project is uh, Durant Road. Uh, the construction has been completed, but it's not fully considered finalized because we, um, we're still waiting for the final inspection from DEQ. So that project is still going to show up if you were to pull it up in dashboard. You'll see that as an active project. Um, the next project listed is Route 60 East Madison Street. That was a state of good repair project. It's, it's been completed and is being closed out right now to archive it. And the same thing for the next one, which is Route 154 on Riverside Street. Um, that's being closed out and archived. 
The next project is South Allegheny. Um, this is a state of good repair uh, project for this year. It's a mile between Monroe Street and Hemlock, and I'm assuming that you guys are going to have that completed prior to the end of this year. That's another one you don't, there's a deadline on when those have to be, the funds have to be expended. And then the Maple Avenue Streetscape Project, which is phase two, um, that's a transportation alternatives project. Um, it's, been a, it's been awarded now and is waiting for construction to start. Uh, it goes between Locust and Main Street. It's sidewalk lighting, landscaping, and street furniture. And the last one on the list is the phase three of Maple Avenue. And this one right now is funded at 60%. Um, and they, there are additional funds that were requested through the Transportation Alternatives Program. Um, this is from Main Street to Jackson River to remove and replace the sidewalks on uh, either side. And one of the things that's, um, in addition to all of the other things that COVID is impacting is uh, normally we would have these allocations taken care of where you at least know what the results were um, probably the end of May, first part of June and the CTB would have already have approved it. That schedule has been delayed. Uh, they are gonna be meeting in September to consider applications that were submitted. So we might know something in September or October. The anticipation is that they're gonna approve or adopt a plan in October. So that takes care of active projects. And then this next list that you see, um, this is three different types of projects. And if you look at the, the program, they're separated into smart scale projects, transportation alternatives, and state of good repair. And the, the first couple, uh, the first four were applications that were made under the smart scale um, program. They were scored, but they were not funded. And the smart scale application process is a competitive process where you're going against other localities uh, for funds and how far that list of projects gets funded depends on how much money is actually in the program and that determines what the cutoff was. So if you look down um, to the next two, You've got East Madison and the paper trail, and both of those had been submitted once before, but they were gonna be included in this application cycle. And it's pending right now. Our application process for these is on uh, five o'clock on August the 17th. Um, so uh, those will be reviewed after they're submitted, so it'll be a little bit of time before you know what's going on with those. And then the next two, um, well, let me start with that one first. That one was scored but not funded. Uh, I think there's some challenges with that one as far as the dollar value for the sidewalk, but there's an extension of the drainage system that's there that I think is, is impacting how that project is scored. And then the last project is the uh, um, bridge replacement over uh, right at Rayon Drive over the Jackson River. So this one has a history to it, and just to make sure that we're all clear, I'll share that history with you. When that first application went in for that project, it was um, anticipated that that project was gonna be fully funded. Um, and that was, it was in the draft for the six year plan for, I think 2018. Um, but there was an emergency project in Hampton Roads, and there was a lot of there were a lot of um, state of good repair applications that the funding was pulled for, and our district bridge funds were also pulled to help provide assistance to that emergency project in Hampton Roads. So, so this project has already been selected for the state of good repair dollars, but again, because of the delay in determining what's happening with projected funding, there isn't a schedule attached to this yet. So as soon as, um, we'll probably know something more in the next month, 
uh, about what's going on with this, and I hope that this project is listed with the, the Commonwealth Transportation Board when they meet in September. But it's it, it scored appropriately, but now it's just determining our funding uh, and, and how the, that would get allocated. Do you all have any questions for me? I know I went over a lot of information in the short period of time. Just with Brown Bridge with mentioning, <coughs> I think my understanding was sort of, it's almost like it's shortlisted right now. Yes. Since it was previously approved and it's, if dollars become available, it, it, it's in the priority queue, yes. right? Yes. So it's, it's more of just a... So it's waiting for those dollars, one, to see what's going to be available, and then two, to determine what kind of schedule we would set up for going through um, preliminary engineering and right away and construction. So. Um, but until you know, until the funds become available to actually plan out the project, we don't really know what what that looks like right now. Anybody got any other questions? So the construction started on phase two yesterday of Maple Street, Maple Avenue. So they're working hard. Yes. Good. So and yeah. there were some delays due to electric things. Any estimate on how long that'll go from beginning to end? Fall, certainly. Late fall. Oh, okay. Late fall. And contracts have all are been, been signed for South Allegheny Avenue, so it's just a matter of the contractor getting on top of that. And so, Thacker, we, we've kind of been waiting to hear on that. Scored but unfunded is what it says up there. So the application was made, it was reviewed, um, but it was not funded. And one of the things to look at, you've got that cantilevered section, um, and I think when you're looking in terms of, of pedestrian access, the there's a high cost for widening that section. There isn't an issue if you guys decide that you want to just maintain it in its current condition and replace boards or whatever. You're what you can do that without, um, you know, that's still considered a maintenance activity, um, but. You know, that one, when it went in for application um, last year, yeah, that was for last year. It did go. It did not score well enough to be funded. <laughs> so the cutoff for funds that was available happened prior to where that ranking was for that project. Uh, uh, just some cookies with that, because I didn't know that that had been denied. Or I thought that thing was still out there with it. For the board to look at. If the, the, the issue with that one is the cost comparison for the sidewalk for normally what you would what you would have per linear foot for sidewalk versus what the actual cost is with that extension for I think is a box culvert that's under there? Yes. Yeah. It yeah. is. So in order to be able to fully fully accommodate the ADA requirement for sidewalk over there you'd have to do a pretty substantial extension and that the cost for doing that is going to impact how your um, how your project is scored against other similar sidewalk projects so I don't know I mean something for you guys to consider is if there's a way to separate that kind of thing out for you know because if you, if you did just a straight sidewalk project just based on normal footage that you're doing for the rest of, of the other sidewalk projects you have, it would probably score a little bit better that way. It's just, that's a challenging location. Well, we were just hopeful that the millions that the Department of Transportation spent around the corner would play into it. <laughs> Always wishful thinking. <laughs> There's no other questions, Council. Uh, thank you, Susan. Uh, got you out here in 15 minutes. That's the best we can do.